You truly, truly have no idea how hot this is right now. I'm sure whoever's watching this, whether they're in the UK or elsewhere, you understand when it's hot. You understand when it's humid. If you're in the UK, you understand how humid and hot it is right now. But you have no idea how humid and hot it is in this room right now. You have no idea how hot it is to not have the fan on right now, unless you want me to just, you know, turn the fan on. I can do the video like this. You can barely hear what I'm saying, no doubt. Or maybe you can hear what I'm saying quite clearly, but it's just, uh, you know, a lot of awful background noise, which I don't want uh, in the video. But you also don't understand how hot and humid it is in this room right now without a fan on and with these two fucking lights in front of my face. Holy shit. Uh, I, I wish I had a setup downstairs where it's a lot cooler in the house, but it is what it is. So this is a very exciting video. I'm going to try and muster up some excitement for it because it's been a pretty, a pretty shit day. And I had quite an adventure to go and get this package. Um, which you know what it is, you've seen it in the tile, you know you know, you know, I'm going with this one. I tend to kind of lead in with um, hints and clues of what Blu-ray I'm going to show next in my update. But you know what it is, it's the Agnes Varda collection. We'll get to that in just a second. But uh, I wanted to tell you, like, as soon as this thing was announced, straight away pre-order on Amazon, just no questions about it. I, I had to have this set. This is a dream set for me. So I just ordered it straight away. Uh, $200, no problems whatever, you know, whatever the price, I'm getting this box set, you know, uh, most expensive shipping, you know, to get it as soon as possible, absolutely, I'll take it, um, 30 pounds, like, import fees, fine, whatever, no questions asked, just give me this set, um, there was a little bit of worry on my part, as far as, um, whether this set would turn up in good condition, and all that kind of stuff, shipping internationally, and so I went with went for the most expensive shipping option, it was released on Tuesday, it is now Thursday, and it arrived this morning, so it took less than two days from Kentucky to my door, which is crazy. I've never had any international package go like that quickly. And honestly, the most expensive shipping option wasn't that much more than the regular. So if I order from Amazon again, I might go with that. Import fees paid, import fees paid, I'll leave that one in for free. I recently was filming a video with Connie and she ragged the shit out of me for using that phrase all the time. She's like, oh, you keep that in one for free. You say that every fucking time. And I was like, wow slammed <laughs> and I have no defense for that and I'm wiping the sweat off my eyebrows already so this is going to be an ugly video so the Agnes Varda set um, it turned up this morning but I was asleep because my tracking said it would arrive next Tuesday which seemed perfectly you know, I'll see you next Tuesday you know, I thought that a week was fine for an international package but nope it arrived in two days and so I was asleep they left a slip through the door with a very confusing message I eventually had to figure it out go to the UPS website create a new account scan a QR code then I found out where it was it was at some news agents in the middle of buttfuck nowhere outside of town so I had to walk like 40 minutes to get there 40 minutes back that was an hour and a half of my life walking in the humid hot sweltering heat but it was all worth it to get back home open up that Amazon package and find within it Another box within the box, perfectly packaged, perfectly preserved, perfectly protected, and it is the Criterion Collection, unspine numbered, box set release, brand new, just came out, a lot of people are talking about it, I was going to say everyone, but I wouldn't say everyone's talking about it, but the people in, in the kind of Criterion-y, world cinema-y kind of um, community are talking about this set, it is the complete Agnes Varda. Already, at a glance, I've said this to a few people already, this is one of my favorite Blu-ray sets, favorite physical media sets of all time. I was really um, skeptical about this one as far as the packaging was concerned because I was expecting this to be like a, you know, the Ingmar Bergman cinema set, like huge, massive tome. But it's a lot smaller than that, actually. It's, it's quite compact in comparison. Uh, but having it in hand, I almost like it this way. It, it feels like her. It feels like it's kind of small and compact, but has so much within it, like just overflowing with, with creative uh, amazingness to use that really wanky term. But that's, that's the, like, it, it, it fits. It really fits for Agnes. Uh, I could take you through my personal journey with Agnes, but it would take too long and I would sweat too much. So this is the box set. I'm not going to go too in depth on the, the actual box set itself, but it's, it's a very weighty set. And I was initially not too fussed with this front cover image because, I mean, it's a great image of Anya's from when she was much younger in the 60s. 
Um, but I, I, I like like old Agnes. Like I, she just has so much character when she is old, and that's how I came to to love her movies. And you know that was how I saw her in person a couple of years ago. She was an old woman uh, in her late eighties. But I didn't realize that there is kind of a, it's almost like a uh, not a reversible art sleeve, but there, there's almost like a multiple choice. You can have the front cover there, or you can use the back cover as the front, which is a beautifully kind of rendered uh, kind of uh, companion piece to the front. So there's Agnes in her later years, and it's just it's, I really love that because you could just put that on the shelf and display it. There's no you know it looks exactly like a front cover, so it's kind of up to you. It's multiple choice, whichever way you want to display it, unless you want to display it with the spine, and I think that has a picture of her looking through a lens of a camera there. So, very briefly, I think that she is, I wouldn't say she's one of the best filmmakers of all time, but she's one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. Um, there's something about Agnes's films that always really just fucking excites me, and gets me so jazzed up about films, because she never, she never makes a film that's just a film. She makes a film that's like more than a film. Uh, which again is a bit of a wanky thing to say, but there's just uh, there's just so much to the work that she's done that I have seen. There's so much I haven't seen. I've seen about um, <laughs> my hands like swaying because it's so heavy. It's not like an, an easy thing to I can put it by here, but um, I'll, I'll quickly show you the inside now. Nathan, who uh, also unboxed this and did a video about it recently, bless him, he got into a car accident that day and still managed to muster up the uh, <laughs> the kind of energy and focus to make a a video about this box set. Um, he opened it, and I was getting really excited seeing all the details and stuff. Oh, I am I am seeing a little bit of a... If we're talking about packaging and it being pristine, there is a little bit of a, a defect here. Very, very small. In the top right corner, there's a little bit of a tear. But it's it's really fine, considering everything else, it's in such good condition. Like, I'm really, really happy with the way that this box set has turned out in terms of my personal copy. But this is the book that holds all of the discs. There are 15 discs in total. Lovely image there of Agnes on the back, very playful, you know, that, that really feels like her, you know, uh, and it has her little signature there in the bottom. So 15 discs, and hit one of the uh, the sleeves in his um, box set was, uh, how would you say, damaged slightly, like the thing in the, the, uh, the actual page was kind of slightly open, and so the disc was falling through. And I realized that this is actually really flimsy, and I, I still think this is... Uh, a slight design flaw. I think that it's something that they could have um, they could have improved. You know, I, I feel like with, with the money that this thing cost, like you can see when I touch it, it bends down like that. I think it should be a lot sturdier. But I love this this central image of Agnes, very young, with a lot of film cans. Of course, she kind of grew up in the well, not grew up, but you know, her, her young life was you know, surrounded with filmmaking in terms of the French New Wave kicking off. Her husband Jacques Demy being a filmmaker. Um, but yeah, so this has I, I can't really show you nicely I don't think but you open it up and like the Ingmar Bergman set it's it's kind of separated into certain sections it's a curated journey through her movies we have early Varda uh, which isn't the first one but I'll just flick through some of them around Paris films that she made in Paris and so on um, some of these things I can't even pronounce I won't attempt to married life so that's films that are kind of related to her husband Jack Demi in California apparently this is a really controversial disc because it has five films, and apparently the compression is really bad. So someone has looked into the discs of this set, and the kind of average bitrate for the movies on this Blu-ray set is around 30 megabits per second. The California disc is more like 15 megabits per second, which is really not good. So they've really compressed the shit out of that one, which is a real shame, because you look at the last disc, which is the 15th disc in the set, and it is called Simply Beaches, and it features her 2008 documentary, The Beaches of Agnes. That's just one sub-two-hour movie, so that they could have, I think, used the disc space better, unfortunately. But yeah, so there's 15 programs, there's all sorts of stuff, visual artist. It goes through many different sections of her career, and I, I like how they've laid it out. I think, for me, I'd go through it at my own pace and through my own kind of chronology, I think. But I like, I like the way they've set it up. We then have this lavish 200 page book. Um, just, again, I, I love the imagery used throughout this whole set. And and I will say with this, flicking through the booklet, it looks like um, the stuff that's in here, as far as the text, really big font. <laughs> like, it's almost like large print text, you know, the, those books that they make for people who have got trouble seeing. Um, so they, they've clearly kind of, um, I won't show that page because there's a lot of nudity in it. 
yeah, they've clearly like bumped up the font size to kind of fill out the 200 pages, but I don't mind that at all, to be honest. And it basically takes you through the entire program and all of the movies and there's notes and comments on all of the films. And then there's a lot of stuff of her own photography, which is really great to see published in this book. Obviously, it's not going to be extensive, but she is so much more than a filmmaker. She was a visual artist, a photographer, a filmmaker, um, a poet, I would almost say, in her own way. So lots of, you know, lots of stuff that, that goes from her entire career as a visual artist, photographer, and filmmaker. Lots of really cool stuff in here. I mean, we've got stuff of her, her cats, which is great. She loves cats, and I love cats. And then we have um, a chronological guide to the films, which is very good. So I like that. Uh, then there's like a guide to all the supplements, of which there are numerous. There's there's so many supplements. A lot of it has been brought over from other releases, from DVD sets, Criterion sets, and other sets, and so on. Um, there is uh, something about an asterisk. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, there's lots of different like the the extras have been split from many different releases, and Criterion have commissioned a, a few new extras. There's a new interview with Jane Birkin, a new interview with her her two children as well, who are now adults. Obviously, um, she passed away. If anyone's unaware, um, I believe it was last year. Now at the age of ninety, ninety one, something like that. So this feels like a very um, unfortunately timely release. But this is something that I'm going to get so much joy out of. And before I continue, I'm going to need to take a little bit of a break and blast myself with a fan because my face is, is really just covered in sweat right now, which is really disgusting. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. And I, I feel the need to explain the, the sudden jump. There we go. All right. So uh, this is this is honestly, as I said, I think one of my favorite box sets, physical releases ever. It's just fantastic. And I haven't even watched anything yet. And I'll get to how I'll be diving through that. And I should say, I, I already have the, the Curzon Artificial Eye box set, which um, compared to the Criterion was pretty damn expensive, I have to say, but I was happy to pay it. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feature films. And this is a super nice set and definitely worth holding on to. There's a lot of exclusive extras uh, that you can't get anywhere else on this set that weren't included on the um, the Criterion and also the individual BFI release of Varda by Agnes, her final film from last year. This also has exclusive extras, uh, most notably the near hour and a half Agnes Varda in conversation talk from the BFI in 2018, uh, which is when I saw her in person myself. Um, the day afterwards, actually. So yeah, it's worth holding on to those other releases. I think there's also some stuff on the Faces Places uh, Blu-ray and many other things. But yes, the, the main event, the, the complete films of Agnes Varda from Criterion. Huge, huge set. And I, I always love just the idea of a complete director collection because there's so many great prolific directors who have many, many films in their filmography that are split between different studios and it's just kind of impossible to gather them all together. Or it's not impossible, it would just be just unreasonably exponentially expensive. Um, but with Agnes, I think, you know, she was a bit of a kind of, you know, freewheeler. She, she definitely kind of marched to the beat of her own drum a lot of the time. And so I would assume, I don't know this for a fact, I'm no expert, but I would assume the rights to her films are all fairly contained in one place. And, and perhaps her family kind of have um, a lot of control over all of her work and things like that. So there have been a lot of restorations that have gone on with this box set, which has been a cause of um, concern for a lot of people based on the, the companies that did the restorations. Apparently, most of the films um, suffer from a, an overt yellow tint. I forget the company's name who did the restorations, but apparently they're known for this. And a lot of people on the Blu-ray forums, the Criterion forums, are really upset and disappointed by this. And I've seen some screen caps, and it does look very, very yellow, I should say. And... People are comparing the DVDs and saying, look, the sky looks blue. And in, in this Blu-ray set, it doesn't look blue at all. So they've just slapped yellow over so much of the color films in the set, which is really unfortunate. And I am such a purist that um, that bothers me a little bit. But at the same time, getting to see all these films in high definition is such a treat, such a delight. Uh, or will be such a delight, I'm sure. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. That, uh, you know, it, this is the best quality you're going to get all of her films and it's a one-stop shop for Agnes Varda and that to me is really exciting this is the back leaflet there that has a little summation of who Agnes was what she was about just some of the films included and a lot of the extras as well which aren't even fully listed here because there's so many of them there's over seven hours of archival programs archival interviews and tributes rare footage from unfinished feature films and commercials 
Uh, it includes uh, Nausicaa, a once banned 1970 television film directed by Varda, which I believe is a work print. And some people have seen it and reviewed it on Letterboxd. So it's uh, not being seen for the first time, but it's certainly kind of more of a rarity, I guess. Introductions from Agnes on a lot of the films that were filmed for other releases and digital restorations of 39 films, including three which are getting um, the, you know put on home video for the first time ever. So it's not 39 feature films. I believe she's made somewhere in the vicinity of 20-ish feature films, give or take. But with all of the short films, there's even like a, a TV documentary from, I think, 2011, which is like about four hours, you know, itself. I love that that's included. I think it's more, it's kind of like a travel log uh, documentary series by Agnes. I can't wait to see that. So the fact that that's been included to me is just fantastic and speaks really to the uh, the goal to make this the complete films of Agnes Varda, I think. But it has a lot of her most notable films, well, a lot, it has all of her most notable films, I should say. Um, which is just brilliant. I love that they still kept Faces Places in there, even though it was co-directed with JR. It just feels like, you know, at a glance, again, like it's it's just so comprehensive. And I'll, I'll, I'll briefly give you just, and it was also region free, I should say, ABC. So for anyone who wants it, perhaps, I think that it would, uh, you know, you can import it without worrying about that. Uh, and yeah, 200-page book. There's so much stuff here. Behind-the-scenes footage, trailers, video essays, all sorts of stuff. So what I wanted to say is that I got into her films a few years ago through the Epic Film Challenge 2, the 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die series that I've been running for like seven, eight years now on my channel. And I watched her documentary from 2000, The Gleaners and I, which is about Agnès um, going around France and speaking to people who glean or who they kind of collect stuff, like stuff that gets thrown away ordinarily. They collect it and make new things out of it. And she is so fascinated by this, which was like a more of a, a kind of, a, I'm not sure if you call it a pastime or a hobby, but more it was more of a thing like years and years ago. But there are still people who do this gleaning, as they call it. And so she's just like speaking to them and uh, very openly and honestly. And she made it with like just a digital hand held camcorder. So obviously it's kind of, it's almost laughable to me that the Gleaners and I have, now has multiple Blu-ray releases when it's a, it can only ever be a standard definition shot on a camcorder film. But it, it, it feels more alive than just something someone has made on a Sony camcorder. Uh, one of my favorite moments of that film is when she's she's filming just the motorway as she's driving to some location and she's filming these trucks and she's just putting her hand over the lens and going like that as if she's catching the trucks and she the voiceover is her saying here I am catching the trucks or when her camera is like held down by her side her hip and she said I, I forgot I was filming still at this point and you see the lens cap dangling around I think she puts some music over it and she's like now we'll see the dance of the lens cap just like what the fuck is this shit that she's left in this balmy old woman but I love her I just it was just so personal um, but it had real like um, texture to it. There was there was a real story there to be told. So then I went and watched a lot of her films on Filmstruck, um, Kung Fu Master, which I'm really intrigued to revisit, considering the fact that it's about a 40 year old woman who has a sexual affair with a young teenage boy played by Agnes's son. And oh boy, that's a tricky one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I liked the film, but I was really conflicted about it. So I'm intrigued to revisit that one. And it's, that's a, that's a, it's a very loaded one, that one. It almost comes off as sweet when it really shouldn't. And I always think if the, the genders were, were kind of um, reversed, it would be a whole different story. But at the same time, people look at, um, uh, what is it? Not Lola. That's one of her films. No, that's one of uh, Jacques Demy's films. Lola, no, what's the, 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 the Kubrick film? And it was then remade with Jeremy Irons and it was super creepy. What is that film? Peter Sellers was in the original and he was quite funny in a film that was otherwise very creepy. It's a Stanley Kubrick film from D -D -D Lolita. There we go. <laughs> Just saw my brain dancing around so many points of reference to arrive at Lolita. And people see that as a classic and I find it really grimy and disgusting. But there you go. And the age difference is much bigger in that film. But anyway, Kung Fu Master, very strange film. But then there's also the, the documentary she made about Jane Birkin, uh, which is called, I believe, Jane B by Agnes V, which is one of the most fascinating biopics I've ever seen. Uh, the Beaches of Agnes I saw in the cinema uh, when Agnes was there to introduce it and do a QA, and a I think. I think it was a QA, and a which was wonderful just to see her in person, be a few feet away from her at the beginning of the film while she was kind of peeking her head out the door and watching us watch the beginning of her movie. It was awesome. That's a documentary about her life and, and everything like that. But then there's like, you know, narrative fiction like she's done with Vagabond, which is a fucking incredible film about this wandering young woman who's just, you know, living homeless in France and 
her journey. Um, yeah, so she is such a great filmmaker and storyteller. I've also seen her very first movie, which is, you know, French New Wave before French New Wave really existed. She's like, she's one of the founding fathers of that, in a sense. If you look at that first film she made, La Pointe Court, I believe. I'm not very good at French, French pronunciation, which is why I'm not going to read out all of the movies included on here. But there's so many that I haven't seen and um, I'm really keen to see. Uh, Faces Places, Vada by Anya as a films I've also seen. So I've seen quite a few of her movies, but there's a lot more in this set that I haven't seen than there is that I have, which is super exciting. Again, considering all of the, the, the short films, that's another thing I love about this set is that they have included, I think, all of her short films, or at least all of the most substantial ones, which is why it's like a pretty much a 40 movie set. So anyway, yeah, so that, that's kind of the my, my brief... Um, summary of, of the things that I have seen from her that I love and it's just I don't know every time I watch one of the films I get so excited about creativity and she's such a special person that one thing I'll never forget is is being in that audience when she was doing the introduction and just the way she talked about things and I, I've, I've spoken about this before where she would mention something and, and then she would say when someone else would normally say like oh yeah there's this and there's that and it's just such a beautiful incredible thing whereas Agnes would, was, would talk about something and go there's this and there's that and I like that and, and I don't there's just such a power to just Agnes just talking about something and saying and I like that and I've tried to adopt that myself where sometimes it's just it's enough to just say I like that that, that's good, you know, or, or that's interesting, you know, you don't oversell it, I don't know, there was something that it just really grabbed me on the day, and I'll, I'll never forget that, and finally, I do want to do a series reviewing her films, um, I started Agnes Vardathon in 2018, and the first episode was me going to see one of her films and seeing her in person, so it was almost like it started so great, it could never be that good again, and I didn't end up going back to it, going back to it, excuse me, I'll leave that in for double free, I didn't, didn't end up going back to it until the year later when I saw Vagabond in my local cinema and I loved that film so much so I reviewed it. And so I was thinking if I do one this year, 2020, it'll be the third episode of Agnes Vardathon. And I, I genuinely thought for a while about doing this. What if I were to do one film every year? So it would take about 40 years, right? It's a crazy idea, that's why I love it. So I think I'd be like 71, 72 when I finished it. And I, I honestly really want to do it. But at the same time, I've weighed up the pros and cons, and there's way more cons than there are pros. And I think that while I would love to do something like that, instead, life's too short. I'm going to dig into this box set. So keep your eyes peeled. Uh, it's going to be, I'll probably do a film at a time. So that way I can just get this stuff out to you. It won't be a big like movie marathon where it's a huge video, a huge production. But I will rip every Blu-ray and, and kind of get images from all the films and, and, and show you as much as I can and really dive into her work. So my battery is dying. Thank you for watching. It's a huge day for me. This is such a holy grail release. I'm so glad that I have it. It's a beautiful box set for a beautiful filmmaker and I can't wait to dive into more of her films, which I'll be doing very soon. And you'll be seeing some videos from me talking about them. So thanks for watching. I'm excited for my future of watching more of this wonderful woman's films. And uh, please let me know anything and everything you want to say about Agnes down below. If you've seen any of her films, if you want to get the box set, if you got the box set, let me know, and thanks for watching. It's, uh, it, it, it's going to be a good one, digging into this box set. I think I'm going to like it. Hey, you're right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you, because...